We've all been there before and it really sucks. Your friend's selling their home and instead of calling you to represent them as their realtor, they decide to call somebody else. Sometimes that person is a competitor. Sometimes it's somebody totally that you don't even know who they are. Either way, it always sucks and it always stings. In this video, we're going to talk about number one, why it actually happened to you, how to address it and how to make sure that it never happens again. The first thing I want you to know when it comes to somebody working with another realtor is that they have no obligation to work with you. Now, I know you might be thinking, no, Ollie, you don't understand. This was my brother. No, Ollie, you don't understand. This was a friend that I went to high school with. It doesn't matter. They don't have an obligation to work with you because nobody has an obligation to do something that they don't want to do. And if they're not working with you, something happened. You didn't do something good enough. You didn't do something consistently enough. They don't trust you enough. Whatever it is, something happened. We just need to figure out what that is. But in order to move forward in this video, you need to first internalize they don't have to work with you. And when you're thinking, no, but you don't understand, stop it. They don't have an obligation to work with you. There are no exceptions to this. The first thing is to understand why it actually happened. Now, there are two ways of trying to figure out why it happened. The first way, which is something that you should do, although it's going to be highly ineffective, is just asking them, why did it happen? Why didn't you work with me? The reason that this is highly ineffective is because they may not have an answer. They may not want to tell you. And if the relationship is such that you felt that they should have worked with you, then asking them why they didn't work with you will just lead to them feeling awkward as well, them feeling guilty and giving you some non-answer that's just going to try to end this awkward conversation so that they can move forward with the relationship that they've already had with you up till now, which realistically, you got to figure this out before that happens, because this is going to be like an elephant in the room and you're not going to be able to address it until you look within and figure out what happened. So now that we know we're going to have to figure it out ourselves, there's there's really four main places to look. There are four reasons that somebody didn't work with you. The first reason is they forgot that you were a realtor. Now it's possible that this is not the one that happens to you, obviously. However, think about that friend who does something to do with software engineering, I think something to do with computers. You don't really know what they do. And so let's say, for example, one day you wake up and you decide to build your own app and you reach out to a company to help you with it. And they go, yo, what the heck, dude? I'm a software engineer. Didn't know that I use UX interface, whatever for software. You're like, I don't really know what any of that means to tell you the truth. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I would have called you otherwise. That could be what's happening with you. They may have just forgotten that you're a realtor. And so in that case, your follow-up needed to be a little bit better. You needed to maintain that relationship with them from a real estate perspective as well. But if that's not true by you, let's move into the second reason, which is they just didn't trust you enough from a professional standpoint. Now, somebody may trust you with their lives. They may trust you with their family. They may trust you with everything in the world. However, that's trusting you as a person, not as a professional. And it's really hard for people who've known you for years, known you since high school, who went out partying with you to see you as anything but just that dude that was in high school that was a party animal. But this is what we need to get them to see. We need to get them to see that there is a professional side to you that they haven't yet seen. And so when you meet somebody as a professional for the very first time, that's all that you see them. Your frame of reference for that person is only as a professional. And so we need to help transition people who just see us as that kid, that guy that we knew from when, when they were younger. We need to get them to start seeing us as a professional. The third thing is they want to maintain the relationship that they have with you and they don't want to blur the lines between their personal relationship with you and their professional relationship with you. Now, this is something that you might be thinking, oh, come on, that's not really going to make a difference. It really might in their head though, even if it wouldn't actually, but it really might. Just think about it. Let's say in their mind, their perspective, their 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 perspective of realtors is that realtors are really just money hungry and all they're looking for is the commissions and they don't really deliver enough value. They're ready to go to war with their realtor maybe and basically say to their realtor all the time, you're not doing enough and always be on their case trying to make them justify their commission check and they don't want to even get into that candid discussion with you. They just want to be friends with you. And if you're thinking about it, if you have that misconception about realtors and you think that all oh, realtors are just this or just that, why would they? Why would you want to work with somebody like that anyway? You want to maintain your friendship, friendly relationship with them. And so those lines do get blurred. And so what you need to do is you need to show them that the lines really won't get blurred, right? Have those discussions with you before this challenge comes up, before this objection comes up, so that when they are ready to sell their home, they don't have a question of the lines are going to get blurred or I'm going to have to be really candid with this person and I don't really want to have those conversations. They know Know that it's not going to be a problem. The fourth and final reason that somebody doesn't work with you is simple. They just don't like you. I don't suggest you do anything to change that. If somebody doesn't like you just for being yourself, 
it's their loss. Screw them. Seriously. Don't change what you're doing if somebody's just not liking it. If you're doing something wrong, that's another story. But if somebody doesn't like the fact that you're a little bit more forward than they appreciate or whatever it is, don't change who you are. Because as much as somebody might not appreciate your style, there are a hundred people that would absolutely love your style. And that's going to actually generate much more business. Now for the actual solution. What do you do with this information? Now that you know that these people have either not trusted you enough, they forgot that you're a realtor, or they wanted to maintain a relationship with you, what do you actually do about that? And the answer is very simple. You build up an audience, you build up authority outside of them that they can peer from the outside in and say, oh, wow, this person is a professional. And they have to question their own perceptions of you and reframe you in a new professional light. The second thing that we mentioned was that they just didn't trust you enough. Same thing. Build up your audience, build a network of people that do trust you, do see you as an authority. Keep on putting more video content out there. Keep showing people that you're the real deal. And they will be forced to confront the fact that they didn't perceive you in the right light, that you're more than just the kid who was a party animal in high school. There's more to you. There's more depth. And when you create that content, when you show yourself in a light of authority and professionalism, they will be forced to question their own perceptions of you as opposed to questioning your ability as a professional. And then the final thing is maintaining the relationship. Like we said, just let them know ahead of time, hey, I'm just letting you know that if you ever were to purchase or sell a home, I would obviously like to be a realtor. And I know that you know that, but I want you to know that our friendship will always come first and foremost, and nothing will ever compromise that. And I will make sure that the entire process is as smooth for you as possible and nothing's going to get in the way of that friendship. So I know we're in the middle of watching the Super Bowl right now, John. I want to get back to the Super Bowl, but I do want to let you know that if that ever happens, I would hope that you'd give me a call. You would, right? Of course I would, buddy. Great. Problem solved. So the way to solve those problems is number one, have the conversations before they come up. And number two is put more content out there, build your brand up so that your sphere of influence can start to see you more as just that kid that did this or just that person who did that. And they can start to see you as the real professional that you are. And that way they will be calling you to actually help them with their professional purchases, their real estate transactions, and their journeys of financial independence, home equity, whatever it may be, but you will be their person.